मार्गेन चित्तस्य पदेन वाचाम मलम शरीरस्य च वैद्यकेन योपाकरोत्तम प्रवरम मुनीनां पतंजलिम प्रांजलिरानतोस्मी in today's session i just give an overview of the whole uh, yoga sutras because i cannot do everything in four sessions so just briefly what is there i'll just tell that so there are totally 194 or 195 196 sutras uh, in each book you'll find different numbers it's not because there is an addition or deletion of any sutra it is because in some versions you will find the two sutras are joined together in some you will find they are separated as two different sutras but in any version the sutras are the same so there are four padas in the whole of yoga sutras divided into four sections they are called padas the first pada is the samadhi pada that we are now seeing we have seen lot of sutras in the samadhi pada uh, so we saw that it has the foundation the uh, first four sutras are the foundation they give the foundation for what this text is about for the meaning of yoga and other things and then we saw about the vrittis the five types of vrittis and the tools to so stop them and then we saw the types of samadhis also sampragnata samadhi and asampragnata samadhi and some tools also in the last session we saw there were some tools given like shraddha virya um uh, uh, abhyasa and vairagya were also discussed but shraddha virya uh, pragnya samadhi they were also discussed and then today we will see this ishwara pranidhana and yogantarayas after this there is a topic about concentration and tools to achieve concentration and then there is a discussion about the sabija and nirbija samadhi also in the samadhi pada so though, though these are the um, grouped into the samadhi there are four sections samadhi pada doesn't mean that it will speak only about samadhi other uh, things like ishwara pranidhana they are also discussed similarly even in other padas sadhana pada is the main thing which has a lot of tools it uh, many practices are um yo uh, patanjali actually tells many practices in this sadhana pada kriya yoga is one uh, where it is tapas swadhyaya and ishwara pranidhana is discussed there also that is tapas you we have to do the work and then swa swadhyaya is introspection and then whatever work we have done the result we offer it to uh, the supreme and then there is a discussion about karma shaya today also we will be talking about this karma shaya and vipaka and also dukkha and when i did the when i told about the sankhya philosophy i told about the three types of dukkha that is that the sankhya philosophy considers and then there is this topic about drashtra drishya samyoga drashta refers to the purusha and uh, drishyam refers to prakriti so when i when i discussed about the sankhya philosophy i discussed about prakriti and purusha the relation between the two is discussed in this section and then viveka khyati is the um, it is the discriminatory power to differentiate to know which is prakriti and which, what is purusha that is discussed here and the most important part is the ashtanga ashtanga yoga many of you have heard యమ నియమ ఆసన ప్రాణాయామ ప్రత్యాహార ధ్యాన ధారణ అండ్ సమాధి సో దాట్ ఈస్ డిస్కస్డ్ ఇన్ డీటెయిల్ ఇన్ ద సాధన పాద ఆల్ ద అవుట్ ఆఫ్ ది అష్టాంగ సిక్స్ ఆర్ డిస్కస్డ్ హియర్ ధ్యాన అండ్ ధారణ ఆర్ డిస్కస్డ్ ఇన్ ద నెక్స్ట్ సెక్షన్ ఇన్ ద విభూతి పాద దేర్ దెర్ ఈస్ ద డిస్కషన్ అబౌట్ ద త్రీ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ చిత్త పరిణామస్ దట్ ఈస్ త్రీ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ మ్యూటేషన్స్ ఆఫ్ ద చిత్త అండ్ దెన్ మేజర్ డిస్కషన్ ఈస్ అబౌట్ ద సిద్ధీస్ so vibhutis are nothing but the special powers that a person acquires when he is on the path of yoga but the warning is we should not get uh, carried away by these powers uh, then the last section is kaivalya pada so kaivalya is, is that state of freedom where the purusha understands that oh i am not this prakriti i am the purusha i am free from all this 
that is the state of Kaivalya. In this Kaivalya Pada, this Siddhi Panchakam, it, um, it describes the other parts other than yoga through which also we can acquire these uh, Siddhis and Vasanas. In almost I think all the sessions I have told about this Vasana, they are, the, they are also called Samskaras, they are the impressions on the Chitta, deep rooted impressions that is discussed in the Kaivalya Pada. And then finally there is a discussion about the Dharma Megha Samadhi. It's a very superior type of Samadhi that is discussed in the Kaivalya Pada. So this is the overall view of the Yoga Sutras. Now we will do the <coughs> recitation of the Sutras. There are many Sutras, so few Sutras we will tell together. Like whatever we have covered till now, that we will recite together. The new sutras I will uh, recite and then you can repeat it <coughs> because they are very big ones. So I think I will recite and you can repeat. But these we will <coughs> take together. Atha yoga nushasanam yoga shitta vritti nirodhaha tada drashtu swarupe vasthanam vritti sarupya mitaratra Vrittaya Panchataya Klishta Klishta Pramana Viparyaya Vikalpa Nidra Smritaya Pratyakshanumana Gama Pramanani Viparyayo Mitya Jnana Matadrupa Pratishtam Shabda Jnana Nupati Vastu Shunyo Vikalpaha Abhava Pratyaya Lambana Vrittir Vidra Anubhuta Vishaya Sambra Mosha Smriti Abhyasa Vairagya Abhyam Tan Nirodhaha Tadakrasthitao Yatno Abhyasaha Satu Dirgha Kala Nairantarya Satkara Sevito Dridha Bhumi Drishta Nusha Shravika Vishaya Vishtrishnasya Vashikara Sanya Vairagyam Tat Param Purushakya Ter Gunavai Trishnam Vitarka Vichara Ananda Smita Rupa Nugamat Sampradhyataha Virama Pratyaya Pyasa Purvaha Samskara Sheshonyaha Bhava Pratyayo Videha Pratitila Yana Shraddha Virya Smriti Samadhi Pratnya Purvaka Itarisham Tibra Sangvega Nama Sannaha Mrudu Madhya Adhi Matratvad Tato Vivisheshaha We had done till here, till the last session. Now we can repeat after. Ishwara Pranidha Nadva Klesha karma vipaka Klesha karma vipaka Ashaye rapara mrishtaha Ashaye rapara mrishtaha Purusha vishesha ishwaraha Purusha vishesha ishwaraha Tatra nirati shayam Tatra nirati shayam Sarvagnya bijam Sarvagnya bijam Sapurvesham api Sapurvesham api Guruhu Guruhu Kale nana vachheda Kale nana vachheda Tasya vacha kaha Tasya vacha kaha Pranavaha Pranavaha Tadjapastadartha bhavanam Tadatha bhavanam Tatav Pratyak chetana Adhigamo 
संशय प्रमाद एकतत्वाभ्यास मैत्री करुणा मैत्री करुणा मुदितोपेक्षा सुख दुख सुख दुख पुण्या पुण्य विषयाना पुण्या पुण्य भावना भावना चित्त प्रसादनम चित्त प्रसाद quick recap of the sutras that we have done till now the meaning um we saw the first few sutras are the foundation that is this text is about yoga and it is written in consonance with the previous words then what is yoga it is the cessation of all modifications of the mind and when you, when a person is in the state of yoga he is with the drashta the seer when he is not in the uh, state of yoga He is associated with the modifications of the mind, and then the five types of uh, all five types of modifications. But all those five types are either of the klishta or akishta type, and the five different types of uh, modifications, and each one of them was explained. And uh, the tools, two main tools to uh, cause the cessation of the modification, abhyasa and vairagya were discussed. Discussed. and then what is abhyasa what is vairagya that was told and then the samadhi in the previous session the samadhi sampragnata samadhi what it is and then asampragnata samadhi what it is and then what about people who don't do any sadhana but still they go into samadhi for them they are called videha prakriti layas about them and for other people what are the tools that is shraddha virya smriti samadhi pragna those are the tools and some people attain the state <coughs> sooner than others what is the reason that was also this that is tivra samvega they have this strong very strong urge very intense um desire to attain that state more the intensity faster they attain attain and the that intensity was also told it is of three types mrudu mild intensity madhya medium and adhimatra very strong intensity now we will go to the next sutra that is ishwara pranidhana dwa dwa means <coughs> it's an option so either you do this shraddha virya smriti that part okay. either you go through this shraddha virya and smriti that part if you find that is difficult then you can choose this path of ishwara pranidhana uh, ishvara what is ishvara that patanjali says in the next three sutras but we will see what is ishvara pranidhana first pranidhana means the commentary says bhakti vishesha it's a special kind of devotion what is this special kind of devotion it is feeling the omni presence of the ishvara everywhere feeling that presence that is ishvara pranidhana now who is this ishvara what is this ishvara when i discussed about the sankhya philosophy i told that ishwara is also a purusha but he is a special kind of purusha what is the special about him 
Ishwara is, uh, there, there is this word called Aparamrishta, that is untouched. He is untouched by Klesha, Karma, Vipaka and Ashaya. And he is a Purusha Vishesha. He is also, Ishwara is also a Purusha but a special one. So he is untouched by Klesha. Klesha is, Kleshas are afflictions of the mind which cause suffering. It includes avidya. Avidya is ignorance. Ignorance of our true nature. That is avidya. So we are actually that pure essence, that pure consciousness. But because of ignorance, we think we are this body. Uh, this uh, we are we get associated with prakriti. So because of this avidya, asmita comes. Uh, during the samadhi state also one asmita I had discussed that is the state of beingness that just being with that I amness that is just uh, that is the asmita with proper understanding but this is the asmita that is arising out of avidya this is arising out of ignorance here I am identifying myself I am this body I am this person I am this profession so that kind of identification, false identification is asmita, it is a klesha, it causes suffering. And because of this identification, raga and dvesha also come. That is, now I have identified myself say, as a woman and I have, I have identified myself with so many ideas and opinions that I have. If I come across another person who has different ideas and opinions, <coughs> then I get dvesha, that is, I repel them. If I come across a person who has similar ideas and opinions, like what I have associated myself with, then raga comes, an attraction towards them comes. So, both raga and dvesha are kleshas only. And abhinivesha is clinging too much to this me and the fear of death, that is abhinivesha. So all these five are the kleshas. The purusha, not generally men, all the purushas, they uh, they are afflicted by the klesha. But Ishvara is a special type of purusha. He is not touched by these kleshas. And purusha is not touched by karma. So karma is. Um, it is difficult to explain, but most Indians will know because it's part of our conversation we keep telling karma it is a karma so karma it can be it consists of punya and papa punya is uh, doing good to others so in summary if you want to know what is punya and papa this one line tells it paropakaraha punyaya papaya parapedanam when we do good to others that is punya and when we do bad to others that is papa so all these karmas that we do get accumulated. It is there in our account. <coughs> and then what happens? The vipaka. That is, this karma comes into fruition. We start experiencing the result of the karma. It uh, expresses itself <coughs> mainly in these three aspects. Jati, Ayu and Bhoga. Jati refers to what are you born as? As an animal, as a plant, as a human being. All that is based on the papa or the punya that is being done before and ayu refers to the longevity for how many years you are able to live and bhoga refers to the major experiences that we have in the life many of them are what, what we create in this life many of them we have created before which we have forgotten but uh, because ishwara he is not touched <coughs> by karma he will not be, touch, be touched by this vipaka also. And the next aspect is ashaya. In Sanskrit, ashaya means a repository, a reservoir. Like we say jalashaya means a water body where water is stored. So ashaya is like that. Here it is karma shaya, karma, the storing of this karma. Uh, that is happening as in the form of vasanas, the impressions. I have showed this ta many times because of the chitta vrittis at the bottom, if you consider chitta vrittis as a ripples on the lake, at the bottom of the <coughs> lake 
<coughs> impressions are formed on the sand. Uh, those are the deep impressions. Those are the vasanas. That is karma share that is stored up. So this Ishwara doesn't have this also. He is not touched by any of this. Now you may get a doubt. Isn't this um, karma, vipaka, the kleshas, aren't they related to the chitta, the mind and not the purusha? Purusha is pure essence, isn't it? Then how can this affect the purusha? A question may arise. So the commentary, in the commentary what happens? They anticipate the questions that may arise in the reader's mind and they, they put the question and they also give the answer. So for this question the commentary says, if a soldier fights a war, the, he may, the soldier may win or lose in the war. But we, we, we don't say that the soldier won the war or soldier lost a war. The win or defeat is attributed to the king who is behind him. King, mostly king will not go into the battlefield and fight. It is a soldier who fights. <coughs> but the success or the defeat is attributed <coughs> to the king. Similarly, the mind, the chitta is in contact with this external world. Uh, and its afflictions and all that is attributed to the purusha behind it. Now, next three sutras describe the, okay, so this is the second sutra. First sutra described the Ishwara, that is, he is not touched by Klesha, Karma, Vipaka and Ashaya. The next characteristic of Ishwara is Tatra Nirati Shayam Sarvagnya Bijam. So, Ishwara is full of knowledge, unlimited knowledge and all knowledge arises from him. So to understand this, uh, if I ask you to visualize a circle, when you visualize the circle, you will also see that you will be visualizing space around the circle. The circle is the uh, area within the circle is limited but the area outside the circle is unlimited. Similarly, the knowledge that we have here is the limited knowledge. It means there is something where which has unlimited knowledge and uh, that is Ishwara, that unlimited space. Nirati Shaya means limitless. And the third characteristic of Ishwara is Sa Purvesham Api Guruhu Kalena Anavachedar. Guru who is a teacher. We have had many teachers in from such a long time. But they all lived only for few years. They were bound by time. But Ishwara, he is the guru of all gurus because he is not bound by time. And he is always he is the teacher because he is not limited by time. Kalena Anavacheda. So the three main characteristics of Ishwara is he is untouched by Klesha, Karma, Vipaka and Ashaya. The second is he is the source of limitless knowledge. Third is um, he is not limited by time. If you notice here the, char the characteristic of Ishwara Nev uh, Patanjali has not at all mentioned that he is the creator. When I told about the Sankhya philosophy where they do not believe in God, it was the same thing. There is no concept of any creator creating anything. The same thing is here also. Even Patanjali has not attributed Ishwara as the creator or Ishwara is not the one who ordains the karma phala, the result of karma. He doesn't ordain anything. Uh, he is just these three things. Nothing more than this, nothing less than this. And now how do we connect with this Ishwara? We have to feel the omnipresence of Ishwara. We have to connect with him. Ishwara Pranidhana we have to do. How do we do that? So for that Patanjali says, Tasya Vacha Kaha Pranavaha. Pranavaha is the Om. Omkara is called Pranava. The verbal manifestation of Ishwara is the Pranava, the Om. Uh, if you see the etymology of this word Pranava, 
it is prakarshena nuyate anena iti pranavaha nuyate means to sound prakarshena means clearly thoroughly so through this om we are able to express this ishvara thoroughly and uh, one more doubt that may come is uh, are we like for example if you take this camel uh we are called we have given a name camel to this so we have been using the word camel when referring to this so when i say camel this animal comes to your mind suppose we had labeled this as elephant and from so many years we have been calling it as elephant elephant so when i say elephant you will get this in your mind is om like that is it something th- th- that is conventional are we labeling the ishwara as om or is it like the lamp mm, the lamp has this flame and the light there when there is a flame its its light is there it is a part of that flame so this om and ishwara uh, is there relation conventional like the naming of camel as camel or is it like the flame and its light this question is asked in the commentary and the answer given is it is like the flame and the light um for this they explain that if there is a father and a son the relation between them exists but sometimes we will have to explicitly tell he is the father it is his son we say but even if we don't say the relationship between them exists this is like that om is like that om is the verbal representation of ishwara uh it is not something that is man made that is what it and uh, how do we okay om represents ishwara so how do we make use of this om the next sutra patanjali says tad japah tad artha bhavanam so two things we have to do japah that is chanting that om song repeating it again and again and also tad artha bhavanam also contemplating on its meaning so if you want to know more about om then you have to go into the upanishads uh, many upanishads describe this uh, deal a lot with om they, they they discuss about om i've taken one from the mandukya upanishad in the upanishad it says om itti etat aksharam idam sarvam tasya upakhyanam bhutam that is this this om is one syllable and this is everything bhutam bhavat bhavishyat iti sarvam omkara eva past present future everything is om yat cha anya trikala atitam tadapi omkara eva even that which is beyond past present and future that is also om and uh, in the other upanishad uh, chandogya upanishad this <coughs> verse comes uh, it says ओम इति एतत् अक्षरम उद्गीथम उपासित उद्गीथ इज अनदर नेम फॉर ओम एंड इट सेस यू यू स्टडी दिस ओम एंड एष भूतानां पृथ्वी रसः दिस दिस होल थिंग सेस द एसेंस ऑफ पृथ्वी एसेंस ऑफ ऑल द लिविंग बीइंग्स ऑन अर्थ इज द अर्थ एंड पृथ्व्या आपो रसः and the essence of earth is water apa oshadhayo rasah the essence of water is the plants and oshadhinam purusho rasah the essence of plants is the purusha and purushasya vak rasah for a, here purusha doesn't mean the sankhya purusha it is the human beings purushasya vak rasah the essence of man is his speech vach rigrasa that is essence of our speech is the rigveda essence of rigveda is samaveda and essence of samaveda is om so ultimately om is the essence of everything that is what it says uh, even these upanishads also discuss about om so these eight upanishads also discuss about om om consists of 
three parts a o and m this om is actually like how uh, ishwara is the is there everywhere he is um, behind everything in this world similarly in the verbal realm in the realm of speech om is the sound that is behind everything so this a u ma represents the jagrat swapna and sushupti states that is waking state dream state and the deep sleep state and uh, many of you will be knowing about gayatri mantra the um, vyahrati that is the bhur bhuvaswaha is the expansion of this a u and ma and uh, the next three lines tatsavitur varenyam bhargo devasya dhimahi dhiyo yona prachodya those three lines are the further expansion of the bhu bhu and swa and uh, the three lines of this gayatri mantra is expanded in the purusha sukta in the three vargas of purusha sukta and the three vargas of purusha sukta are expanded into the three vedas rig yajur and sama so um, there is a lot of, about om uh, in sanskrit we have this uh, thing called mahavakyas many of you would have heard of mahavakyas like aham brahmasmi tatvamasi those mahavakyas are nothing but the essence of all the speech whatever everybody is talking in this world if you try to take the essence out of it it boils down to these mahavakyas and the avantara vakyas are expansions of this so and if you try to take the essence of this mahavakya then it comes to om so the essence of whatever that we are speaking whatever sound we are hearing on this earth the essence of that is om uh, so then patanjali says the benefit okay you are doing this om chanting and contemplating on the meaning what benefit do you get out of this so there are two benefits that he mentions first is the pratyak chetana adhigama pratyak chetana is that individual that consciousness the purusha within us the deep uh, pure consciousness within us adhigama means understand we start understanding the pure consciousness within us by doing this ishwara pranidhana through this om um uh, chanting and contemplation now pratyek uh, chetana its characteristics are it is shuddha pure it is uh, not afflicted by the kleshas and other things and it is prasanna that is it is uh, free from um it is free Prasa, it does it is not associated with good or bad and kevala has yeah it is totally free no limit there is no limit of time it is not limited by anything now if you see this is the same characteristic of the ishwara so why patanjali has told by doing this ishwara pranidhana you will understand the individual purusha within you and why he did say <coughs> you will understand the ishwara so basically we are trying to understand ourselves the pure essence within us but by doing ishwara pranidhana we are understanding that pure essence within us it is like uh, because both of them have the same characteristics ishwara is also a purusha only like for example if you know to drive a particular car if i give a different uh, brand car say you know you drive bmw if i give you a tesla you will be able to drive you don't need to learn to drive that Uh, you don't need to take special class for that in any subject if you know the a particular subject the allied subject is easy similarly if you contemplate on ishwara you will understand the purusha within because they both are very similar to each other so uh, first benefit of doing ishwara pranidhana is pratyak chetana adhigama second benefit is antaraya abhavah antaraya sa the obstacles that we encounter when we are on the path of yoga or you can take a, if you are on the path of achieving any goal even there you will uh, uh, encounter these obstacles 
abhavaha is it gets dissolved because of this ishwara pranidhana the second benefit is the obstacles get dissolved so what are these obstacles the antarayas there are nine antarayas first is vyadhi disease if the body is not in good condition we cannot achieve anything that is one obstacle styanam refers to the inactivity of mind that is lack of interest sometimes we do encounter this some sometimes we are very enthusiastic to do what we are doing but sometimes there is this lack of interest that is an obstacle samshayaha is doubt uh, doubt is a huge obstacle when you when you are not clear on what to do that is a huge obstacle pramadaha is not practicing the steps properly so you know these these steps i need to do to achieve this goal but not doing that properly is pramadaha alasyam is physical laziness styanam was mental uh, in this interest but alasyam is physical laziness the commentaries uh, say that some say it is because of kapha that vata pitta kapha that you see in ayurveda but mainly it is that because of the heaviness of the body that is what causes this alasya avirati he means intense activity that is a restless mind the mind is thinking of 100 things at the same time that is avirati that is also a huge obstacle then bhranti darshanam wrong understanding so when you, you are trying to understand the process the teachings but but you have understood it wrongly that is also an obstacle then alabdha bhumi katvam is uh, inability to scale that is you have reached a particular state next you have to move to the next stage but not moving to the next stage is alabdha bhumi katvam and then anavasthitatvam is lack of stability you have scaled you have moved to the next step but you are not able to be stable in that state that is anavasthitatvam so these are the nine antarayas nine obstacles that a person encounters and along with these nine obstacles they are always accompanied by three sahabhavas uh, saha means with bhavati iti bhuvah they, they are always with those nine uh, antarayas and vikshepa is they throw the mind out of balance that is why vikshepa sahabhuvah the sahabhuvas are dukham sorrow so when we are going towards a goal sometimes we feel sad that i have not yet achieved this goal so that dukha and then daurmanasyam is dejection we lose hope that that is daurmanasyam angamejayatvam is uh, trembling in the limbs that is angamejayatvam mm, this trembling the body also should, needs to be stable because the mind is sad and the sorrow and dejected the limbs also start trembling and shwasa prashwasa that is the inhalation and exhalation are also out of balance so these uh, the sahabhavas accompany the nine uh, antarayas the obstacles but if we are on the path of ishwara pranidhana if we are doing the abhyasas then we need not worry it will these will get dissolved and another upaya another tool to and uh, to dissolve these obstacles is tat pratishedhartham to stop them eka tatva abhyasah eka refers to ekagrata that is single pointed focus and tatva means a principle and abhyasah is practice so practicing on one principle having that single pointed focus on one principle in this matter commentators differ a lot in their views uh, vachaspati mishra he says this eka tatva abhyasa is actually referring to ishwara pranidhana only because previous to this patanjali has discussed about ishwara pranidhana so by eka tatva abhyasa he is actually referring to ishwara pranidhana 
another commentator vignana bhikshu he says no he is not referring to ishvara pranidhana because in the sutra literature i had told you about the sutra literature in the sutra literature there should be no repetitions we have to be the, the person who makes the sutra has to be as concise as possible so he wouldn't have repeated it vijnana bhikshu says eka tatva abhyasa refers to any principle you can take any principle and you can have single pointed focus on that principle and one more commentator hari harananda he says yeah eka tatva abhyasa refers to ishwara but it is not uh, uh, for trying to focus on an ishwara outside it is trying to see the ishwara within us trying to be with that limitlessness within us trying to be with that pure essence which is untouched by the kleshas that is within us seeing the ishwara within us and focusing that is what is referred to in this uh, word eka tatva abhyasa and uh, from here onwards um, patanjali discusses seven tools for getting that concentration to get that ekagrata uh, i will not be doing all the seven tools today it's not possible but this this one sutra is very nice beautiful one so i will just uh, tell this one mm-hmm. this is about the emotions bhavanaha or emotions we we all have emotions it is something very common but in this sutra patanjali tells how to put it into proper use so that it benefits us so that we get uh, that single pointed focus and our mind becomes calm so maitri karuna mudita upekshana sukha dukha punya apunya visheshana so we will usually see four kinds of people around us some are sukha that is they are very happy when they are happy a range of emotions can arise in me when i see a happy person a range of emotions there is a possibility to arise in me either i can be happy about their happiness i can become jealous about their happiness uh, i can t- try causing trouble to them because they are happy so anything is possible but patanjali says if you if you come across a person who is happy then have maitri towards him have a friendly emotion towards him be friendly with that person if we have other kinds of emotions about this happy person then it is we who are getting affected our mind will go out of balance we will not get that single pointed focus ekagrata we will not be able to stabilize the mind and if we see a person who is in dukkha that is who is in sorrow so if i see a person in sorrow i can either feel happy about it or i can uh, say this is because you did this karma you got you are suffering you are getting what you deserve like that or i can have karuna compassion i can if i am able to support i can support i can have that compassion so to keep the mind in balance when we encounter a person who is in sorrow we have to have compassion and when we see a person who is doing punya who is doing noble activities who is helping others when we see such people range of things can happen within us but to keep our mind in balance we should be mudita we should be happy that they are doing good to others they are bringing peace to others we have to be happy in order to keep our mind in balance and apunya if you see a person who is doing bad things then what should we do to keep our mind stable we have to do upeksha indifference we need, we need not uh, go and yeah, try to change him or we not we need not criticize just remain indifferent to it. so uh, patanjali describe gives totally seven tools to bring that ekagrata they are called parikarmas so next he talks about the breath if you are a person who is not able to work on your emotions then you can work on breath and if you are not uh, if you are a person who is not able to work on breath then he gives another tool that is the sensations so these rishis are called paramakarunikas they are very compassionate beings 
they understand that all humans are very different so uh, like patanjali has given a platter of tools whatever suits you you can choose uh, whatever best suits you whatever you feel is comfortable for you you can choose that tool and go ahead and we will do the practice uh, before doing the practice um, i will I have not yet uploaded these videos in my youtube channel but this week i will be doing so if you want to catch up if you have missed any session i will be uploading one by one i'll upload all the videos on my youtube channel my youtube channel is tatvam there are other tatvam channels also two or three this is the logo and uh, i am starting my sanskrit classes for beginners from september if anybody is interested you can visit my website tatvam.org and you can also email to tatvam.sanskrit@gmail.com now we will go into the practice uh, today that uh, we will do the same practice but we will be chanting om also we have studied about om because it helps us to connect with the ishwara with the purusha so what we will do first the object you see uh, actually this uh, i am making you see the object but later if you want you can practice with the sound also uh, because the five sense organs they they are constantly encountering many things so we need to have that uh, gap that is we shouldn't get associated with the object with what we see also with the sound when you hear some sounds you are not uh, you shouldn't get associated with the sound and uh, similarly with the with what you feel on feel and also the taste so all that also you can practice when uh, later if you want to take this forward you can do with that also uh we will do the object thing and then you close your eyes and then you observe the sensations in the body don't get carried away by them if you are if you feel some sensation pain or some itching or burning just observe that just know that it is a sensation it is there and you are not that sensation don't react to it immediately then third is focus on the thoughts thoughts come arise as waves just look at them if a thought arises just see it okay a thought has come this wave has come and just allow it to pass then when the mind is stable we will do the omkara chanting for 10 times and then in the last session i played a song that is called nirvana shatkam uh it summarizes the whole teaching of the sankhya philosophy yoga philosophy so there are only six stanzas and in these six stanzas uh, it is said that i am not the mind i am not the chitta i am not the ahankara so everything is getting refuted i am not this i am not my ears i am not my nose but i am that pure essence within me so that gets repeated in every stanza Uh, chidananda roopa shivoham shivoham refers to i am that blissful consciousness within which is so pure that is what it says in every stanza so i'll just play that music and you can just uh, feel that music feel the words and the, and what it is saying so we will start with the meditation uh, first you can just observe the objects around you without getting associated with them close your eyes now try to see any sensations in your body heat cold itching pain anything But just see it as a sensation don't get associated with it
Now observe your thoughts from a distance. Don't get carried away by them. Don't resist them. Don't try to control them. If you are not getting thoughts, enjoy that blissful blank state. do the om chanting just breathe in and together we will recite om so much for coming for four weeks and really grateful to all of you and uh, I'm 
very uh, grateful to Debolina ji also. She is the one who coordinated everything for me. She made me feel so comfortable. <laughs> and also Krish Gupta ji, uh, like he is the one who organized it. And I was discussing with him. I just said Patanjali Yoga Sutra, and he said this is a great idea. We will do this workshop. He is the one who said we will do for four weeks. Uh, and he, he also is very supportive, so I am very grateful to him also and uh, to all of you because I was telling Krish Gupta ji, what if nobody comes, comes for the <laughs> workshop, he said don't worry, we will sit and listen, but you all came and I am so happy, thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Shubhaji, once again for demystifying the Yoga Sutras and making the concepts so accessible and uh, so relatable to people like me who doesn't have much knowledge about it. But I think now I get some ideas about what this vast uh, session is about. Um, thank you for bringing the igniting the interest and uh, it it was uh, i really appreciate your time your dedication and uh, thank you for everything uh, my pleasure yes i would <laughs> i'll just I, yeah. I would like to say something that yes even <coughs> at my age or whatever age that uh, i think uh, your knowledge is something like uh, it has been i have attended many workshops but never a kind like this for me also it has been very enlightening uh, you know uh, it's kind of uh, you know you learn so m I've learned so much in these last four things and I and I have uh, gained an interest in like going further and reading about it so very thankful for that <laughs> thank you thank you so much it's for like you have ignited this. kind of a spark <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know so even that which I, is, uh, so thank you. I am so happy that uh, you have got the interest and I am thankful to you for being so consistently coming for four years. The no, only <laughs> problem is I wish it would have continued further. <laughs> <laughs> so Anuradha ji, we all know good things come in small packages. <laughs> <laughs> Most scientific explanations on yoga, meditation, it was developed by Maharshi <coughs> Patanjali thousands of years ago and properly studied. It gives all the information that can, is required for any kind of yoga meditation. Okay. And it's very complete. You did a very good job of explaining most of it. Thank you. And, uh, yeah. So it's, it's subject a, uh, actually subject matter is also very interesting yeah. uh, I have done my best but the subject matter is actually very <laughs> interesting <Yeah. laughs> because it is knowing ourselves right our mind which we have not tried to understand it but now this, he, here Patanjali is like uh, dissecting the mind like anything so yeah. um. I, I like that this, the, the sutras are very small verses, uh, 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 very um, unambiguous, very uh, clear, very strict. I like that a lot. And you can make so many books out of it, but you have to experience it. That, that's that's the idea. <coughs> and that you have explained in the very first lesson, so that, that's very right. Um, and if I may do a suggestion, I'm not a Hindi, so you would translate Sanskrit to, to a Hindi, but I don't understand. Uh, so uh, if the PowerPoint would some, contain some English words, I would be very happy. Uh, now I have to recall, yeah, yeah, I remember the Prakti and the Bahusha because I, I know what it is. Uh, uh, we discussed, but all, all the other words, it's, I'm not familiar with, so mm -hmm. I forget. So, so in English, I remember it easier mm. when you uh, re recall them. Mm. So, it's like just a suggestion. Yeah. So, if you talk to Hindis, it's perfect. <laughs> One yeah. problem is it's difficult to find an exact English word. Yes, I, I know you are. I know your problem, but that's your problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I try to do something. Yeah. Thank you.
How about you? What is your experience? Mine? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I have the Yoga Sutra book at home and the Dutch uh, translation, but it's totally different from what you're telling me. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, totally different. It's just, there are just words that I read and you making it more alive and with examples and then it will stick more and I got very um, inspired about uh, the meditative uh, state of mind and so since a week I'm now meditating in the morning so you oh. got me inspired oh, wow. doing that as well so it's, uh, it's not at uh, five or six o'clock in the morning yes. but <laughs> working on it and just small amount of time and maybe mm. make it longer so, yeah it's very uh, yeah. inspirational thank you thank you yeah. how about you you said you had four yeah no no not, not. oh i'm sorry for me when i <coughs> first came yoga sutra i also had the book and uh, I never thought that it would be so deep. I was thinking, oh, it will be more connected because we do yoga, so something to do with yoga. But came to know that it has, uh, it's completely yoga is just a part of a small, uh, the whole yoga sutra. It's more, it's very deep, very profound. And uh, it's more about you don't have to, uh, in our everyday life, we can incorporate all these practices and uh, you, you know, mean physical part is one of the component of yes 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 element. yeah but then you with explanation uh, you gave very good explanation and that is what like you said uh, the commentary it makes you go introspect so, and mm -hmm. uh, and i have been doing that and it really makes you feel that you know we can be in different uh, doing everyday life but uh, you don't need to go in a samadhi. <laughs> yes. You can go and just attain that yes. in your everyday, whatever small thing gives you um, you happiness. And we can achieve that bit by bit. Like you said, be consistent. Mm. That is important. So even if it is five minutes, I think it's very important that we give that uh, <clears throat> to it. And uh, so yeah. this is something uh, I wish but and the but the best part is your explanation <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i just want to say also though i have not attended all four unfortunately i only <laughs> came attended the last two and especially today is related to our day-to-day -day life <coughs> very beautifully very sensibly explained the steps to get a stable mind mm. to be able to do our work whatever it may do be with concentration, single-mindedness. So it all, you explained it very well for the practical <laughs> life of every day and how we can move on a spiritual path. Khas karke, the, what you explained about Om, about mm. the consciousness, mm. it is very relevant and we can understand that. It, it really sets <laughs> out on that path. You did it very well, I Thank must come so out. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Kaitriji. Your takeaway from the sessions? <coughs> yeah, um, well, I uh, experienced a whole other level of uh, yoga with these sessions and um, also the deeper meaning of uh, certain words uh, or like OM or like words we use every time, like even the Gayatri Mantra, but also from the beginning, uh, uh, all these uh, mantras we said. Um, yeah, it's beautiful actually to see uh, that there's a whole new world behind those, uh, but and knowledge behind those. Uh, uh, yeah, this, these these uh, yeah uh, uh, different uh, texts, mm -hmm. and also um, uh, also it makes you think more about yourself as a human being and how you can change and also to cope with difficulties. So it it it, it doesn't even it's just like a philosophy a new philosophy and uh where we can reach some goals uh, uh life life goals yeah 
and it's just beautiful that we uh, get the, like a glimpse now because I think there's so much more. Mm. And uh, uh, I, I personally found it really interesting. Mm. I would like to uh, see more. I was <laughs> telling you from the first time, when can I upload? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's uploading I'm coming, yeah, so that I can see all these sessions yeah, because uh, I'm like eager to see it yeah. again and make some notes. And uh, because uh, like in a session like this, it, it comes all over you, like uh, Willem says, it, it, it has a uh, not all uh, English uh, mm -hmm. translation, mm -hmm. and then it uh, for somebody that doesn't, um, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah, understand Hindi that good mm -hmm. or Sanskrit, then it's uh, the, a different world. Mm -hmm. But uh, it helps uh, mm -hmm. when you translate it to English, and then uh, it helps also when we can look at ba back to it and then yeah. pause it, write yeah. it down, <laughs> and make like a. A booklet yeah, <laughs> out of your sessions. <laughs> yeah, where to upload it. Yeah. Uh, yes. Some, yeah, please. Yeah. Um, I've been doing uh, uh, Kundalini yoga a long, long time ago when I was pregnant. And uh, I remember also this Om sound and also that we had to chant Guru Dev Namo, but I didn't know what it had, what it meant. Oh, okay. It's not necessary to say Guru Dev Namo. Maybe the you from whom you learned in that school that practice might have been there mm. guru deva namo means go down to the guru that's oh, all okay you, yes yes, you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because you are all the way coming from shifawal yeah. for attending these sessions so yeah. i assume you have something from inside which is bringing you here so i would like to hear yeah i also here. started the, the first first thought was like it's going to be a yoga session so i will <laughs> probably do a bit of like yoga and stuff but like then uh, the first session itself uh, made me think like yeah there's so much more to it and uh, going into the thought process and and also learning the various things and at the same time the end the practice session sort of like just deeply engraves you into your own mind tries to remove all those clutter and then you're able to sort of like zone out and sort of like find that peace. And I, and I think that was also one of the main things I'm coming every every session. And uh, yeah, probably from tomorrow or day after I have a yoga uh, class starting. So uh, oh, okay. that's also like sparked some interest to do a little bit more of yoga. And this is more meditative and at the same time, uh, uh, what do you say, bodily uh, exercise. Nice. But yeah, thank you for uh, giving so much information and uh, I wouldn't have known so much about yoga. Even I did relate to some of the Hindi words. Uh, wow. It made it easy to understand. But like, I uh, think yeah, this is really nice. Thank you <laughs> thank for doing this. You. you want to share something? Yeah. Uh, it was um, opening a whole um, mental book with these sessions because uh, yeah, I know I knew something, but um, it made me interested in taking the book, read everything, and then meditate the page. Uh, time. Um, I'm, I'm curious to know more and maybe I have the same uh, difficulty with the, with the words and of course I can relate to the ones that I knew mm -hmm. and then indeed they are not translated but, but yeah I, mm -hmm. I couldn't know that. Um, yeah so it's a motivation to learn all of them step by step. Anybody want to share anything? Want to share anything? Well, um, uh, yes of course. A huge thank you. It was extraordinary. Um, as everyone has said, it's a very co some people know about the text, so they, they do know it's a very complex, it's a very easy looking text, but it's actually very complex to understand what it means. And as you said, many, many interpretations. And, and you've simplified it in such a nice structured way. You know, both you broke it down into five, four, this is how you do it, these are the tools. And most of the texts don't give you, don't tell it to you in that way. They just go into a story and they don't simplify it in the way you just you just brought a really nice framework to the whole concept of Patanjali Yoga. And then the second piece is that it's really interesting that we're talking about Patanjali Yoga in this time frame, you know, in this modern day and age, because as we all know, and the, all we, we've all discussed, it's such an ancient text that's such a powerful text, but so unknown in any context. And it's really, most people who know about it are really sort of aware of your deep yoga practices because it's fundamental to understand. So now suddenly you brought something, a very ancient text into the mainstream, if we can call it, because now everyone is going to be talking about you, <laughs> yoga, which is so funny. Um, and, but, and I think the second piece, the last piece, sorry, is that I really wish we could continue in some form. 
I mean, I think there's a lot of interest, a lot of people are enthusiastic to continue and deepen their understanding and how we can practice this. And so maybe we can see what other solutions are available, even if it's outside of the context of the embassy, because I think you suddenly have like a whole new follower. <laughs> 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 yeah. She must be having my note. Hey, are you, you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will see if I can do something like a course, full course on this, because now that I am going deep into it, I have also become very interested and uh, I have to thank my husband also. <laughs> he became so interested. So when I um, just to do a rehearsal, I just tell him this is what I am going to speak. He became so interested. He is going deep into it and he is introspecting and giving some points. <laughs> he is reading books. He also became very interested and uh, I am able to and uh, sense that this doubt might come in the mind of audience because of him <laughs> he puts that doubt in front of me before itself mm -hmm. so because now that even i'm interested i i thought i'll make a full course if here <coughs> if we can do then i will do it here also if not then i will uh, try to do a full course <coughs> so uh, if I do, of course, I will definitely be announcing it in the YouTube channel. So you can. So she has a will, there will be a way. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm also thankful to the Gandhi Center. Yeah. Because uh, we are very lucky that uh, we get to be part of such um, yeah. workshops because uh, I have lived so many years in India, still yeah. living in India. I'm getting to experience the Yoga Sutra here, <laughs> thanks to it uh, being organized and uh, and when I tell back to my family there, they said you're lucky that you're getting yeah. all these uh, <laughs> <laughs> to experience because this is family. something four five thousand years back and uh, it is our Indian uh, culture, mm. our knowledge, which has wisdom has been there, but we just need to I think explore further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the new generation, my daughter has been also coming. So yeah, for her the age, she yeah. uh, she has been fi finding your. Uh, I'm so happy that very she interesting. Is such a young girl, <laughs> like she's attending. No, she grew. Uh, she ha uh, she will talk for her. Would but <laughs> Your mom is saying on yes. your behalf. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether she can to say. Uh, yeah. No, I found it very nice. Uh, I've, I didn't know anything about yoga sutra before attending the workshops, uh, so it was very new to me. Uh, and I think the way you explain the Sanskrit words, um, because they can seem quite long and daunting <laughs> in a way, but you broke it down and explained it in a very simple manner. And I didn't know that yoga was so deep. I mainly I knew about the yoga um, poses and you know all of that, but I didn't know the philosophy behind it. So I think this is a very nice introduction about Yoga Sutra and to get started on exploring it further. So what's your major takeaway? I realized how um, talks a lot about the mind and how you can control the mind uh, and it's more about um, a, how to achieve a state of meditation um, so not necessarily you know controlling the mind but also um, being in a state of relaxation mm -hmm. um, and I like the way that you uh, explain the different formulas of doing it I think uh, in a very simple manner about how to um, stable the mind I think that's good yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I think more often what we do is we try to seek uh, happiness in the world outside. But from these sessions, we come to know that we have to seek happiness inside. That is most important. And when we already find or found this happiness, we see that how calm we are from within and how calm things around us become. So when we are calm from inside, then even the stress which is going around us, it becomes like an easy thing because it's like it's not happening. I'm very thankful to Shubhaji. She, when we discussed and she said, yeah, I will do it because she was sure, sure that, you know, she has to start from somewhere because I, I, I think it was just a topic which you I just told and you said you do it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I really like the way you present it from, you know, giving the theory and then here are the tools, what you can do, right? So it was really well structured, very well studied, very well thoroughly, you know, defined and everything. So 
many thanks to you heads off to you in a way you have brought up this nicely written text in front of us so grateful uh, yeah. i'm very grateful to you actually i was telling them that like i was scared that what if nobody comes you said don't worry we will <laughs> we will listen to you <laughs> but they all came but you were so supportive so, <laughs> so a big round of applause <laughs> So this is just like uh, ashtanga, <laughs> so different, different uh, flowers. Mm. Thank you. Thank you.